Hello and welcome to Fridays with Brandon. Today is Fluke Fridays, episode number 52, I believe. And what we're going to be talking about today is some test leads. We're going to be talking about the TP-175s and the TL-175s, kind of show you those, the differences between the test probes and the test leads. I'm also going to do something a little different than I've done before. I'm going to do a Q&A. So I've got some questions that have come in through the comments this last week. So thank you for asking those comments last asking those questions in the comments last week. I would ask you and any others if you do have questions about fluke leave them in the comments. I think I'm going to start adding this. If you guys like it, let me know. If you don't, let me know that as well, but I think that this might be really beneficial to share what other people are asking and will help us all be better. So, first we will talk about both the TL-175s and the TP-175s. And what are the differences and why would anybody care about these versus regular test leads? So let's jump over to the desk um, or the bench and we'll go through it. So both the TL-175s and the tp 175s. Let me see if I can get it in focus. There we go. Get this paper out of the way. Okay. So you can see they are shrouded, and all uh, test leads have to come with only four millimeters of metal exposed if they're going to be used in an industrial environment, whether it's cat, uh, if they're in a cat three or cat four environment. So you can see with this, we only have four millimeters exposed on both the red and the black. But a lot of times they'll come with cones now. Most people will throw those cones away right away and then never have that protection again. But here you can see that they are rated for CAT3. Let's see if I can get that even closer. CAT3 1000 volts, CAT4 600 volts. The highest rating for test leads right now. If you were to spin this, you can see you can actually retract these test leads or the, the shrouds on both the uh, TL both the red and the black. And you can see they're threaded there at the bottom so some of our um, alligator clips will actually thread onto there so they don't slide off. Okay, so that is the big thing with both the 175s, whether they be the TP-175s like these over here or the TL-175s like these. Now, the TL-175s you will see they are permanently fixed to the lead, that's why it's TL for test lead because it comes all in with this. Uh, you can see they also have very long flex guards, okay? So a long flex guard, uh, they're going to last a lot longer than regular test leads. You can also tell if you have these in your hand, the leads themselves are a silicone test lead, much more flexible. The TL-175s, um, they come with two levels of guarding. There's actually a layer layer of white silicone under this black or under the red. So if you were to cut or nick the black or the red, you're going to see the white before you actually get down to the metal, knowing that you need to replace your leads before you have any metal exposed and you're in real danger. So that's the TL-175s. This is the TP-175s. What makes it different? They look very similar, have a long flex guard, but these are part of the SureGrip family and you can actually bring these off of, and they have four millimeter banana jacks you plug in. So these, you could have your, more of a kit of leads that you can put different uh, alligator clips and whatnot. They do not have a white layer of silicone underneath. They just are black or red, but they're more versatile. You can snap them in and out, not have to carry a whole nother set of test leads. They both do the same thing as the other. You twist them, you have exposed. You can see that the uh, tips are slightly different. Um, that shouldn't make a huge difference for most people. Um, anyways, these are the TP-175s versus the ones that are connected with the leads, which are the TL-175s. Maybe I'll do this and use this as a screen cover for you guys. Okay, so you can see those. Okay, enough about test leads. Now we're gonna get into the Q&A and I'm hoping that you guys will really enjoy this. I, th I think I'm gonna enjoy it. So, from Yugam Jethi, it says, this is in relation to my II-910, II-900 leak detection video. It says, does it, being the II-900, II-910, work 
for finding leakage in brake circuit or CNG circuit. So first let's, I had to do a little research to figure out um, what all that question entailed. So I believe with the brake circuit and Yugam, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments and we'll try to address it next week. But I believe for the brake circuit, what Yugam is talking about is for com um, air brake systems. So if on like semi trucks and things like that, you've got air brake systems, maybe on a train, you'll have those air brakes. Will the air leak detectors or the sonic imagers, the II-900 series, will those detect those leaks? Absolutely. We've uh, sold those to several of the semi manufacturers uh, when they're taking their trucks and they're doing quality control and they're trying to find leaks before the end. You can absolutely use the I-900 or the I-910 to find those when you're tracing the airlines. So that one, no questions, yes, that's easy. The other one, um, and typically those are gonna be, let's see, typically that pressure is probably gonna be between one and 200 PSI. So that's just like a normal air system, so you would expect that, yes, not a problem. Now for the C and G, that's gonna stand for um, compressed natural gas, I believe, and compressed natural gas on trucks specifically, I think is what we're talking about here. And from what I looked up, I found that compressed natural gas, it, when it's in its um, fuel cell or whatever, it's under a lot of pressure when it's in its storage. It could be under 3,000 to 6,000 PSI. So lots and lots of pressure. You're going to have no problem hearing a leak with that. You got to remember with the I-900 series, it really doesn't carry, care what the median is that you're looking at. The question is, does that median or gas create sound when it's coming out of the hole uh, or out of the, the leaky area? As long as it is creating sound, then the II-900 series could hear it. So for natural gas, that 3,000 to 6,000 PSI, yeah, you're not gonna have a problem seeing that in the storage. When it goes through the regulator and it gets more down to that 30 PSI world, can you see it? Yes, you can see it. You're probably gonna need a, um, you, or you could need to control the environment where it's not just loud banging out parts in a stamping press or in a compressor room um, to hear those lesser leaks. But in theory, yes, you should be able to see it. One thing I would say, and this goes for everybody out there, is if you have a question about an application, especially for an I-900 series, and you have a specific application, you want somebody to come out and show it, reach out to Fluke. We've got salespeople all over the country, all over the world, and we will get somebody on site and try it for your application. Obviously, the goal is not to just, hey, we, can, we did it and find all your leaks for you and then be done. The goal is, to prove the application, prove that it works for you, so then you guys can move forward purchasing with confidence that the tool will do what you need it to do. So I would really encourage you with that, not just for this specifically, for the i900 series, but for any of the Fluke uh, more expensive tools, whether it be power quality, thermal imaging, get a salesperson involved. Um, the worst thing in the world is when I get a call from somebody and they hadn't talked to some, a salesperson and they bought the wrong thing and now they're frustrated. And there's really not a whole lot I can do to help at that point. So we don't want that to happen. Please get your local salesperson involved. Okay, next question, question number two. Uh, Monter Climb, it says, is it good, again, being the II-900 series, is it good for refrigerant leaks, leaks detection in AC units and its installation. Often, there are ultra small leaks in coils and weld places. So this is a maybe application. Again, maybe you wanna get your local salesperson out there to try it for your application. I have seen refrigerant leaks, especially ones that have been simulated. There's plenty of pressure to see it. The problem that I find is, and the problem most customers find is, they're either extremely small leaks that are so small that we either can't find it or something, or they're big enough leaks, but by the time you get there, it's completely out of refrigerant at that point. So the answer is you could find it, and I've had customers do it, but what they'll do typically is it's the system is completely out of refrigerant, so they will pressurize the system with compressed air instead of refrigerant 
to kind of, because compressed air is a lot cheaper than refrigerant. So they'll do compressed air and then they'll scan the system with the I-900, I-910 and find the leaks that way. So that is an application that you might be able to do. If you guys have had positive experience with finding refrigerant leaks, leave those in the comments below. And our final question, this is a pretty easy question, number three, it says, hello, um, from Riggers A, it says, hello, I wanted to ask where I can find fluke spare parts. That's a great, that's a great question. Where do you find fluke spare parts? That would be the place where it really is kind of the hub for all fluke information. I would go to fluke.com. Um, you can find it under service. I will give you the phone number you can call to see if we do have uh, spare parts. We don't have spare parts for everything, depending on how old it is. And some things we just don't sell that spare part maybe for if you need it. But if you want to check out and see if we do, you would call service. And that would be, I'll leave it in the description below. I'll leave a link as well as this number, but it's 888 99 fluke if you're in the US. If you're in another country, you're gonna to have to visit your website. So 888 fluke or 888 If you don't wanna do fluke, it would be the same number as 35853. So 35853. So 888-99-35853. Okay, this concludes my first Q&A with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, again, give me some feedback, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.